Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third Zoom meeting on financial support this morning. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Sue Llewellyn, the business manager at Haywards Heath Business Association. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to the chair of our association, uh, Claire Jones. Over to you, Claire. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just laughing at Stephen Hilly's cat who's walking across the camera, um, which actually does lead me to say good morning, Claire Jones, chair of the HHBA. Um, I, like everybody, am susceptible to teenagers walking in and getting their breakfast, so just to warn you in advance if that happens. Um, so uh, this morning I'm going to get Kevin from the council to talk for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to throw it open to questions from the audience. So this really is more of an opportunity for all our members to ask the council questions. Um, so hopefully at the end of this hour, and we will be very prompt, that you feel you've had um, your question answered or is going to be answered or handled. So that would be a great aim. So Kevin, I'm going to hand straight over to you. Thank you so much, Claire. Um, good morning, everybody. And uh, I'm here to talk about business rates. And I know it's a lot more involved than uh, just the subjects I'm going to talk about. But I'm going to talk to the ones most dearest to us at the moment, which is retail, leisure and hospitality discount, uh, called expanded retail discount, and the business grants. Um, can I first talk about the expanded retail discount? Um, if um, you meet one of those criteria, and there is guidance on a website of being in the retail business, the leisure business, or the hospitality business, and you're wholly or mainly providing a service at your premises that is rated for visiting members of the public, um, you could be entitled, whatever your rateable value is, to a business rates, the government call it a payment holiday, but it's a 100% discount in 2021. Um, for those properties that are unsure of this, and <clears throat> there is some degree of flexibility, although uh, if you have contacts from the members of public, telephone, online, or other ways, uh, unfortunately, you wouldn't meet that criteria. Um, we do have some flexibility and can award um, the relief even if the description for the valuation office is different to uh, the, the use of, of that premises. Um, going on from that, um, I'm going to talk about the business grants. There's three business grants all told. One is for small business rates relief. Now, if you qualify for small business rates relief on your bill, and uh, you could do that if it's your only property with certain exemptions within England, up to 15,000 RV, um, and up to 12,000 RV, you'll have no business rates to pay whatsoever in the financial year. Now, if you qualify for small business rates relief, and it will be shown on your business rates bill, you are entitled to a 15,000 pound grant. And um, obviously you can apply to the council for the grant, the council that you pay business rates to. Um, that one's quite simplistic. If anyone feels they should get small business rates relief, do contact us and we will look at it and see if you qualify. And we're also quite prepared if you were um, rated at the 11th of March, 2020, even if we're now awarding you small business rates relief to pay you a grant as well. We are using our discretion to correct that and to deal with it. The second grant is a 15,000 pound grant for anyone who is entitled to the expanded retail discount that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Now, there are a lot of businesses that don't qualify for this. Um, because they don't qualify for the discount. And a lot of people have applied to us for the grants when they don't actually qualify for the um, expanded retail discount. Um, but if in doubt, come and talk to us. There are two grants at this level. Um, one is up to £15,000. Um, uh, sorry, one's up to an RV of £15,000. Uh, £15, um, and that's a £10,000 grant. And unlike the retail discount, which has no rateable value limit, this one has the 51,000 RV limit on the grant. So you could get discount for having a higher RV, but you won't get a um, grant because um, the RV is over 51,000. Now, a lot of people have come to me and said, yes, my RV is over, or we're waiting to hear from the uh, valuation office agency in respect of our RV. Qualifying date is the 11th of March. If we knew of your uh, change before the 11th of March, we are using our discretion to actually pay you grant and to actually give that grant to you. Um, 
Unfortunately, the VOA, the Valuation Office Agency, are not controlled by the council. They're an independent organisation. Um, I wish they'd act sometimes a little bit quicker than they do, but they do have their problems as well as we all do in COVID-19. Um, so we are reliant on them coming back to us. Uh, we are chasing them up wherever possible and uh, trying to get responses to them a little bit quicker than we can actually get. Um, currently, we have paid out um, over £19 million pounds, um, to nearly 1,500 businesses. Um, we are turning around these applications very, very quickly. Um, on payment holidays, we're quite happy to look at any payment holidays in respect to business rates to those not qualifying for the discounts uh, and uh, come and talk to us is basically. And I'm more than happy for you to email me or go through Claire and uh, Sue because they do forward on your emails to me if you want that. Uh, and thank you ever so much for their help in this process and dealing with that. Um, it is a complex area. I fully realise that businesses are struggling very much at this current time. Um, do come and talk to us. Um, yes, there may be ones that have slipped through the network. Come back to me if you feel that there is a case where you have emailed us and we haven't responded. My email address is kevin, that's K-E-V-I-N, dot Stuart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, at midsussex.gov.uk. Um, I think I'll leave it at that point, Claire, because I know you said you wanted a lot of questions, so I'll hand it back to you. Great, thanks, Kevin. Can I get you just to write your email in the chat um, so everybody has, has a record of that? Not a problem. Okay, so um, I've got a list of questions I'm just that we've been sent in. So um, I'm going to start going through those, and uh, I'm going to do about three of those, and then I'm going to um, open it up to the floor, so it'll be a case to put your hand up, because... Um, Going through the chat, I always find it get quite confusing and convoluted. So I'll get you to literally um, say, ask your questions. So first of all, um, do you think there are, from the knowledge that you have from the companies that you've been helping so far, do you think there are um, some particular uh, um, business areas that are falling through the gaps, um, but could actually be helped? Yep, uh, I do believe that Jonathan Ash Edwards, who's listening in, oh, right. if you could um, demic him, wanted to answer yeah. this question himself. So perhaps and I can Mims, hand over I'm to the I'm going to unmic you as well, and Steve, yeah. so make sure that you're all there, ready to um, chip in. Oh. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, everyone. Um, so my, my role is leader of the District Council. Um, so un undoubtedly, um, th there are many areas where, where businesses are falling through um, some of the gaps in the various schemes that have been designed. I, I think the government's move really quickly to um, get a lot of these economic support packages um, up and running. And, and inevitably, when you, you design something um, at a national level and, and at that uh, level of speed, there will be some, uh, some gaps and, and, and examples where uh, businesses uh, don't fit all of the criteria. Um, as Kevin said, we're using as much discretion as we can um, in, in terms of the grants the District Council um, is administering. Uh, we have to balance that by the fact that we'll be audited at the end of this process and, and uh, the government will end up claiming money back. Uh, so we have to try and balance that uh, discretion and giving support um, uh, as quickly as we can with uh, the, the requirements we're under. Um, in, in terms of some of the common areas uh, being fed back by, by businesses, and, and I know Mims will um, be, be able to bear this out in, in her work at, at all uh, as well, it, it's incredibly helpful getting feedback from you uh, through sessions like this. Um, both Mims in, in her work with, with government, uh, I'm on, on weekly conference calls with, with ministers. All of these issues are being fed back in. Um, and I think what we've seen is the government being uh, quite responsive. You know, so there were, were changes to, to schemes and new schemes being announced yesterday. Um, so, so where there are examples and, and we've got a reasonably good picture uh, of what they are, we are feeding them in and, and hopefully um, you know, they'll, they'll be able to be uh, some response to those in, in due course. So I think my message really is, is keep drawing attention to, to those so we can feed that up the chain into, into government where, where necessary. Great. Kevin, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I think the leader has answered that question extremely well. So thank you, Jonathan, for that. Um, I think there are a lot of things probably more at Jonathan's level than my level. And rest assured, the support of Jonathan and the members to my team has been fabulous. And we have been communicating with each other on issues, which I think is very important as well. 
Now, I have to say, from my perspective, um, Kevin, you've been exceptionally um, helpful to everybody that I've put your way. What I want to make sure happens in future is everybody has access to you and to everything that they need. And that's the tricky part, I think. That's the, but what, I'm going to park that issue for now. I want to keep going on the questions. Um, okay, so is there anything that can be done um, for businesses that haven't applied for rate relief who actually are eligible? Because that's a little bit of a gap. The, the, there is a gap on this. Um, the, v, the valuation office description isn't always helpful. It says office and premises, and it's quite evident that the business um, is very different to that. I mentioned before when I, I, I did my little introduction that the criteria uh, has to have an RV, has to qualify for a discount, the expanded retail discount, which is the main one because small business rates relief is generally quite easy to fathom out whether or not someone qualifies. Um, but the, the expanded retail discount is a little bit more complex. So if any business, wholly or mainly, is open before the COVID-19, because we disregard that, is open for members of the public can't be wholesale it has to be members of the public and can show that they they do that we will look at that and give the response to that certain categories are excluded by the by the guidelines but generally we have been told by the mhclg to be as flexible as we can but if you get contact business wise online telephones or whatever it would appear you don't meet that criteria so even if you've got a gray area come and talk to us because mm -hmm. we'd rather you got a decision that we actually um, had a look at and came back to you with an official answer. And I think that is the problem. There are a lot of grey areas in how certain businesses operate and they don't realise that they are eligible. And it's about how to get them in touch with you guys. Um, last question from me for the moment is... Um, Obviously, you've got this, this fine line of um, the rateable value. You know, if you're fi at 51,000, you're eligible. If you're at 52, you're not. And that's just such a massive, again, it's another gap. Um, can you tell me there anything that can be done for those businesses? Right. Um, it, it, it's evident at the moment, apart from the retail discount, the expanded retail discount, that um, a lot of businesses over 51,000 RV can't qualify for any discounts or reliefs that are available at the moment. However, and I'm not saying that this will happen, my suggested approach to them is to actually seek a review of their actual rateable value. Obviously, that is done through the Valuation Office Agency, uh, and um, there is a, 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 an online facility to do that, to actually put forward your case. It's called Check and Challenge. I'm more than happy to give you the link um, to that. I'll send it to an email later on today to you, Claire, um, and challenge that. Now, that is dealt with by the Valuation Office Agency. Unfortunately, I have to legally charge with what is in the um, property list, which is done by the Valuation Office Agency. But if they amend the RV and then come down to an RV below 51,000, and I'm not saying they will, they'll look at whether it's material change of circumstances, we could then give expanded retail discount if they meet the qualifying criteria. I would certainly suggest anyone that's close to the 51,000 RV seriously considers that. Okay. Yeah, well, just... that's actually good information because sometimes you think these rules are hard and fast. So there is a little bit of leeway with some well, of the... My view is on roadworks, people can get a temporary reduction of um, rateable values. And that has happened before. And generally it's a 10 to 15% reduction. And rateable values when there's roadworks that impact upon a business now oh, i'm not a rating expert but my view is if you're close to that rv level it is well worth putting in a case but the more information you can give the effect on your business to the valuation office agency that are independent of the council the better it is okay, can, I just ask, can i just ask a quick question to kevin on that please claire yeah by, by all means yeah That's it. morning kevin in relation Hello. to that uh, uh, What's the impact partly of COVID on the VOA? So in order to give you know, people listening, what would the likely time scale be of a decision? So it's fine applying for this, but if it takes six months, well, that's probably too long. Thank um, you. Morning, Councillor. Um, I, I would say to that question, the, um, the waiting time before COVID-19, generally out of the Valuation Office Agency, was four months. Um, COVID-19 like with any organisation, has impacted upon an organisation. However, 
they're not taking telephone calls. There is a contact link, which I will forward to you, to uh, Claire. Um, we have our own contacts within the valuation office agency and we are putting pressure on them to turn certain, um, let's just say, sensitive cases back to us as quickly as possible. Thank you. So if there are particular sensitive cases, I'm aware of some with people listening today, do let me know and I will put my own pressure on the valuation office agency. But I will say again, they are a separate organisation to us and, and therefore I can only put pressure on them. But rest assured, I will contact them day and night. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to throw it open now to anyone who'd like to ask um, any of our panel the que a question. Just put, literally physically put your hand up if I can see you. Donna. Hi. Um, yeah, Kevin, thanks very much. It's been all really very helpful. Uh, our situation is with the valuation office, as I think a lot of people are. And I'm very happy to have an office at Fresh Mill, which is one of the buildings that ha they haven't uh, given rentable values for. Um, you know, we, we're we lucky enough to be still working and busy at the moment. But um, what's the situation with if, you know, this does take months, will we still be able to get the grant further down the line because it will sort of be held, if you like, or is it a case of once it's gone, it's gone, so you were too late because the valuation office took too long? Uh, thank you for that. And I do know the Fresh Mills development very well, by the way, because I've personally been there. Um, I am using, as, as the leader said, I'm using the council's discretion to pay any grant where we're aware of the circumstances before the 11th of March. That property needs to be in the property list. I could have said, no, we're not going to give it under the guidelines, but we are trying to help local businesses wherever we are by using the council's discretion. So we will give you the grant if you meet the criteria, which you're likely to do under small business rates relief, I'd have thought. Um, so rest assured, however long it takes, and I was corresponding with some of your colleagues at 11 o'clock last night in respect of this property, um, uh, we will do our utmost to chase up the valuation office agency on this one. Okay, thank you. I was more concerned about whether, because we really appreciate that you're doing everything that you can and that your your hands are tied your end, but it's more a case of whether, I don't know how it works from the government fund perspective, whether there's going to be a case of, well, it, it, it we would have given it to you, but they took so long, it, it's actually, we're six months down the line, so it's all gone. Well, I am actually an advisor to the government group that's been putting the guidelines together on this. Um, didn't necessarily say I agree with every set of the guidelines, but I've been advised from the local government groups in respect of this. Yes, there's pressure on us to pay this, but we have said that there's some very hard to reach businesses and we're generally running at about 70% where we've paid now and 30% of businesses that we're chasing up to get these grants. I've been told that the grants will be available longer to actually pay. And rest assured, I will continue to make a case for that, to that particular group. I think we've got another meeting later this week. So um, if that changes, I will let you know, but I can't see that changing. Okay, thank you. Okay, if we can have a question from Andrew, please. Uh, th thanks very much. And everything you've said, Kevin, sounds really helpful, which is great. But I need to tell you two things, please. One is, we're a local business and we've written to Mid-Sussex Council three times now. First of all, with regard to business rates relief. And after an initial response from a gentleman called Mr. Baker in your team, somewhere in your team, we've had no further correspondence at all and simply can't get an answer um, because we believe we qualify, but literally can't get an answer from the council. And secondly, if I may ask, we think we may also be eligible for a uh, business support grant. We've written again to the same email address of yours three times with no response. And unlike both Brighton Council and Horsham Council, where they've got a specific application form on their site to apply for a support grant, we couldn't find one anywhere on the Mid-Sussex uh, page, which is why we wrote to the same people that we've written to with regard to the rates. So in summary, two questions. How do we get an actual response having written three times, number one? And two, how do we actually contact somebody because we believe we may be eligible for the grant as well, please? Uh, thank you, Andrew, for the question. Um, I'm not going to talk about a gem an individual case. 
But what I will do is I will personally look out for your emails and I will give you a response by my close of play tomorrow personally to you in respect you. of your grants. In respect of the access to business grants, we have an online form as well. Um, I have used HBA. I have done social media. We've sent letters out to businesses uh, promoting the website. I will send you the link. Hopefully I can do that today um, in respect of that. Um, we have got information, but obviously it's looking on the website where it is. If there's any suggestions how we can improve that, I'd gladly take them on board. But I personally will come back to you. You've got my email address. I personally will come back to you by close of play tomorrow. Thank you. And what I'll do, if I may, I will forward the email correspondence to you after this Zoom, myself or my colleague will. That would be fantastic. And, we've, we've and I promise you, I will come back to it individually and let you know one way or the other. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Peter Maskell, I see on the list of questions I have here, there's one from you. Do you, yep. do you want to ask your question? Yeah, cool. No worries. That's fine. Um, so mine's uh, similar but different. So I was about to uh, complete on a new on a unit on the Broadway, um, and um, we just literally we we kind of not registered before the dates. So I'm just trying to see that obviously if we do go ahead with that one, I'd be actually a, a, a disadvantage compared to competitors in there. So I was just trying to understand whether the business rate relief that we've taken advantage of in Horsham would be available to us and whether there'd be any other grants potentially we'd benefit from by actually investing in, in, in coming into the area. Right. Um, I can only talk for business grants, perhaps if uh, the leader wants to talk about a wider area. Um, on the business grants, if you meet the criteria, you will get it for every property that you were rated for business rates. So regardless of whether you had two or three in, in, in Mid-Sussex or one in Horsham or one in Mid-Sussex, if you met the criteria, you would get it. Um, you'd have to be rated the 11th of March. If you weren't rated the 11th of March, if we knew about it and we were waiting for the Valuation Office Agency as I've explained, you'll get that. Um, the leader may be aware of other opportunities on grants. Um, I think you were looking for a wider remit than perhaps business grants, judging from your question. Uh, potentially, I suppose it's one of them is the business rate. So it's black and white. So as we hadn't actually um, exchanged on the on that unit at that time, yes, um, yes. there's no way we'll benefit from that. So uh, no on the way. business grants, you have yeah. to be uh, registered by yeah. the 11th of March. Okay. That is a date the government set, which was the date of the Chancellor's budget. Sure. So if you come in now, I can't give you a grant. We might be able to give you a relief and discount, but yeah. I can't give you a grant based no. on the guidelines. However, if we were aware of that um, property and should be rated mm -hmm. the 11th of March, but we're still waiting for it to be resolved, we are happily using our discretion to go back. But in your case, we haven't yet done it. So that way I can't use my discretion. I just have no discretion on that okay. one. Yes. I don't know if the leader wants to just come in and say anything about the wider area of grants. Yeah, very, a couple of things um, to, to just highlight and, and appreciate that they're not immediate things. So we normally run um, a micro business grant scheme every year. Um, we have just slightly paused uh, the setting up of that because it's normally based um, upon match funding, which you know, in normal times is, is fine, but, but probably isn't hugely helpful uh, for businesses now. So, so we're just doing a bit of work to, uh, to look at how that can be uh, done differently this year. So, so keep an eye out for that. Um, that that's a, a pot of money that the council uh, has every year to, to support uh, businesses. Um, it's also worth looking at the local enterprise partnership, Coast to Capital. Um, so they're the, the government and business body um, to support economic growth in, in this area. Um, they've established, they're actually one of only two um, in the country that have established uh, their own grant fund. Uh, I think they call it the Backing Business uh, Fund. Uh, they put an initial £2 million uh, into that to help businesses grow or, or innovate or adapt um, as a result of that. Um, I have to tell you, they've been completely overwhelmed by applications, um, but they are running a, a waiting list um, and are trying to get hold of uh, and free up some more money for that. Uh, so it may be well worth uh, having a look on, on, on Coast Capital, the LEP's website, um, and get yourself uh, an expression of interest and, and on the waiting list for that as, as well, if that uh, might, might sound appropriate as well. I know they're quite keen to, uh, to, to, to get some more money out to businesses if they can get hold of it. Okay, so Mims, did you want to say something there? 
Yeah, so there's a couple of things, if I may. I would uh, Firstly, apologies. I've um, been frozen and uh, I've had some issues getting in and out this morning. So my, my apologies. Um, I think it's the rain. Um, I, I just wanted to bring Sarah in um, and just tell you some of the stuff that Jonathan was alluded to, which we're lobbying on the broader side of government with. Um, I also just quickly wanted to explain um, also to Jonathan's point about um, how things have had to be set up with the systems that are already there if we think we're kind of a month or just so down the line in terms of actually being able to pay out money the reality is we normally pay in money to the government in order to to get it back out we're having to use the tools and the abilities that we've got there is certainly um, a substantial delay I understand at the valuations office uh, which is um, being a uh, they're trying to sort that out and they're trying to get extra help. I spoke to Councillor Hillier and, and Councillor Ash Edwards as well about the kind of if there's money left and if there's grants there, there is discretion. Uh, Jonathan's absolutely right that um, any discretion to use will have to be explained. But um, uh, certainly we're suggesting that anything spare, particularly those people that sit on those cusp limits, that we're able to, to be more supportive to those businesses. So that's something we've lobbied for. But I just wanted to bring in Sarah, who's been doing the substantial amount of casework and, and business liaison. I do want to say also, um, Kevin and uh, has explained it in terms of the amount of correspondence we've got coming in. I cannot tell you how difficult it is to, to get through to, to actual mid-Sussex business stuff. I've got people writing to me about national employment issues. I've got people writing me across the world offering PPE or offering specialities just to get through to what is actually mid-Sussex based in the inbox is extremely difficult and to process that so and I'm sure uh, everybody is having um, real challenges in terms of getting through correspondence so we're turning everything local around as quickly as we can uh, but um, I just want to say everybody is bombarding the inbox in all different shapes and forms and on lobbying uh, which doesn't help when you're trying to get to what local constituents and businesses need so that's a real challenge we've we've managed to you know get get ahead of ourselves but it's been really very challenging and also as Jonathan described earlier a lot of the policy is happening over a matter of days so we're having to learn understand decipher and then try and get it back out to the people that it's appropriate to as well so that in itself is quite challenging and we've only just for example got fully staffed and only just got um, various people through security checks and things like that because it takes some time with the house of commons so it has been quite challenging but i think we're on the front foot of it but i just wanted to bring sarah in about what we're seeing in the inbox and what we're lobbying on which i think will help your broader membership and hopefully some of those um, bear traps that you're seeing that you know that we understand and that we're feeding into to, to, uh, Treasury. So Sarah, if you could just come in and then I just wanted to very quickly pick up on some of the work that I'm doing and Baze is doing cross government about how we're looking at reopening and restarting and, and the themes around that to just give you a little insight. So I'll bring in Sarah now. Hopefully she's not frozen as well. Are you there, Sarah? Otherwise I'm gonna to have to ring you. Yeah, great. Sorry, technology, not done this bit before. Okay, um, the, the volume of work we're, we're receiving and the number of inquiries is probably around three times what we would normally be seeing. We're getting a lot of inquiries in um, across people who are business related in respect of um, grants and uh, obviously the valuation side that you've got. We're getting a large number of people who are self-employed directors with um, raising their um, difficulties with the treasury, um, people who are self-employed, who own, earn just over the 50,000, so they're not eligible for those schemes, as well as people who run on a, a mixture of pay as you earn and self-employed, either in parallel or in sequence. So there's lots of people who feel that they've been missed out in the, in the schemes that are being available. 
Um, in respect of um, the uh, interruption loans around, um, obviously there was the announcement yesterday of the micro loan and some changes to there that we're still picking up and understanding what the differences are. We're being approached by people who are relatively new into business, so they've been having difficulties with um, accessing interruption loans because they're considered more startup. So we've raised that with the Treasury. Um, people who have other loans who want to potentially consolidate um, the existing loans they've got and move on to an interruption loan, again, raising those with the Treasury. We have now got a casework style link um, with UK Finance. So if we have anybody who's applying for an interruption loan and they're being declined by their bank, the uh, UK finances are kind of an overseer have agreed to look at those as individual cases. So if that's you, please write to us with who, what you've applied for, why you've been declined, and we can ask somebody to go away and have a look at it for you. Uh, the um, emphasis is that at the minute there are around 40 banks that are accredited for the interruption loans, but that is increasing. They're moving towards also accrediting the non-banks, so other financial lenders, and the plans are that um, they're going to make sure that the process is far simpler, especially for the small businesses, moving to hopefully just a, um, a one-page application rather than the masses of information and the accounts and all the background details. So they are working towards making those processes simpler. Um, we get inquiries about um, job retention scheme, people who have fallen through the gaps, people whose employers have still chosen to make them redundant. We are aware that obviously about a week ago the claims process, the HMRC are confirming that from the claims that were put in on the day that were opened should be paid um, either today or tomorrow. So it's about a six, seven day turnaround from making a claim to getting the money. So if you're um, going through that process, the money will come through in about a week. Okay, um, so we've we've got direct links with with the treasury um, that we are feeding particular issues, and I think Sarah's just given you a really good overview of uh, the sorts of challenges in, in our inbox. And I could see Kevin uh, nodding quite a lot uh, in terms of understanding that. So, um, 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 all we can do is keep pushing this. I've got meetings with the. Uh, uh, British Chambers of Commerce, FSB, CIPD and um, Hospitality U uh, UK today as well and I think the, the loan that was announced, uh, the, sorry the scheme that was announced yesterday was uh, very much in, in reaction to that and I think that should be uh, some of the simplification that Sarah's talking uh, about. Um, there is uh, our, the health and safety executive uh, reports across uh, government to Bayes and to, to me. We're doing huge amounts of work with, with the health and safety executive. And if, um, if you can work uh, and you are able to do it um, appropriately with social distancing and you're not in, in the closed list, people are starting to recognise that. So you are seeing um, trades and buildings starting to, to reopen in, in Mid-Sussex. I would say a lot of people, uh, more people have chosen not to, probably due to, to the anxiousness and, and rightly adhering to the lockdown, but are recognising that Perhaps they don't need to be closed and that is starting to uh, impact. So the balance now is striking uh, about how we start to think about returning to work safely uh, when the lockdown comes to, to a close and how particular businesses and how particular sectors are going to do this. So, I'm engaged uh, cross government with uh, sector um, sector analysis around um, infrastructure and construction, non food retail and customer facing. Uh, roles, office, labs, public sector, manufacturing and distribution and logistics and all of those sectors are being looked at individually and I'm just paraphrasing how they're working about how we can start to go back into work in a, in a safe way going forward, working with Public Health England, working with HSC and understanding what PPE would be required etc. So I just wanted to give you an insight of some of the stuff that isn't 
necessarily out in the public domain yet about what the government is doing in terms of looking to that next stage. I think we would have seen with the Prime Minister's return yesterday some of that being alluded to, uh, but we're not quite in that space. But I would very much say uh, what Jonathan said earlier, if you're finding particular challenges, please let us know, please let the council know, because this really does help to, to create the pressure along with other MPs, along with stakeholders and uh, um, business groups to try to make sure that we can try and find as, as wide and uh, able solutions as possible. So I think that's probably uh, enough from me. I've just seen the question on the furlough scheme. Um, yeah, so it's been been extended into June and I um, I would expect that this sort of scheme is going to continue to run. I'm, I, but I think in parallel with what I've just said about certain businesses that restarting and shouldn't be furloughing anyway because they can continue to work appropriately. And I think that's what we're going to have to, to try and work out over the next few weeks and and uh, into the next few months and also you know this has all been about protecting the NHS and not being overwhelmed and now we're not overwhelmed in in our area we've got capacity and support for people and the government and the scientists are going to have to work out what peak or mini peaks can we work with so that we can start to go back uh, about our, our daily lives but also continue to know that we have to do it in a different way and that we have to make sure that we've got the, the services that we need but the other things coming into to my inbox are people in the wider public health challenge dentistry dentists are really affected by this anyway but uh, dentistry and people really with underlying conditions already with with pain and suffering with that with them um, cancer treatments lots of people have been asking about wider health treatments and when can that happen and we heard from Matt Hancock yesterday very shortly in, in our conversations with the CCG that's been uh, been able to be starting here as well because we have got that capacity because we've kept the COVID peak down so lots to think about and lots the government is doing but I just wanted to give you a slightly wider picture. Thanks, Mims. Sorry that I, uh, my Wi-Fi fell off uh, the um, off the edge of the planet. There. Does anyone else have a Zoe? Please do ask a question. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> just firstly, I'd like to say that uh, Kevin, uh, the person that was he was emailing with at eleven o'clock last night, was me, uh, and he's been poking up with that for about eighteen months. Um, it was just a question to Mims. Is there anything we can do? Uh, my ongoing issues with the valuation office obviously have come to a head due to tenants not being able to claim um, their grants, but our, our issues have been going on probably with them for nearly eighteen months. I've tried contacting um, Melissa Tatton, who is the chief executive of the valuation office. I've been to Jesse Norman, tried to contact them. Is there anything else we can do? Because it's obviously this is having a huge impact on a, on a number of our tenants here. We haven't even been open a year yet. Um, but my, my issues with them have been ongoing for some time and I'm just super frustrated. Uh, Mid-Sussex have been amazing and I cannot emphasise that enough. Kevin was in while we're in the middle of the building work but is there anything else we can do to try and get things sorted out in the valuation office? Yeah, I would say there's a frustration from many MPs and across the sectors of the valuation office uh, as, as a whole. Um, I think me and Sarah can take this away offline. I can approach Jesse uh, again and have a look at that because they do... Um, actually have to uh, respond to ministers and if there's particular challenges and particular areas under your uh, portfolio there's an array under mine and people are not performing or getting frustrated then then that needs to you know keep being under people's nose so let's take that offline and see what we can try and do to, to unlock this I think uh, you heard from Sarah there are definitely some challenges in the systems but as we know we've got we've got yeah we've got this potentially for a long time so we're going to have to uh, try and sort this out and uh, Sarah was on a, another call with uh, one of the um, all party groups um, and some of the uh, business sectors that we were talking about earlier and and um, she she um, 
told me a great analogy which was made uh, as about um, uh, during the war that um, people were rescued uh, from Dunkirk by small boats and uh, actually they it's our small businesses and our other sectors which will help rescue our economy and that was the analogy that was made so I think we just keep um, agitating keep pushing uh, and that's how things get changed government at the end of the day does not have an endless pot of money it comes from businesses from taxpayers and if we don't get everyone back and restarted and supported in the best way possible i don't know how we get out of this we don't fund the nhs we don't fund all our vital services so we've got to support and save our small businesses and i think all the stakeholders uh, who are talking to government are making that very clear and we will do that in mid sussex on your behalf Excellent, thank you. Sarah's, Sarah's got my contact details, so um, yeah, maybe we can have a chat. Yeah. Whenever you um, can. Oh, thanks. thanks, Zoe. Um, the last night there was um, another loan, uh, no, it wasn't a loan, it was a loan. It was a £50,000 loan. Um, do you have any more details on that, Kevin? Um, I know it was only launched very late last night that I saw, uh, actually I think it was yesterday afternoon that it came I'll out. I'll send TV. you some details later on today. Um, Is there anything you can talk about it here? Uh, it's outside my general remit, but I believe, uh, and Mims may know more than me, um, but she already alluded to it earlier on, I believe, the announcement was made yesterday by the Chancellor, but there right. is a loan um, to help small businesses, I believe, and there was an announcement made by the government who who, to be fair, have been very good at getting information out. And uh, there's a very good business support uh, web tool um, where businesses can go in and actually put their circumstances and see what help is available to them. Um, and that is well worth looking at because I've actually used it myself to see what the scenarios are. Uh, and so I, I do want to praise the government. I think they've been doing the, uh, a lot of good in getting information out to various things. Yes, there are probably some businesses that, that some help hasn't quite got to a Mims is chasing that up, except that. Um, but they have done, uh, it's not a bottomless pit of money, they have done an awful lot of good as well um, in respect of getting that stuff and putting out support things as well, uh, from where my angle is anyway. Yeah, so Thanks, Sarah's going to have a look at uh, who in our inbox it's going to affect, but it's businesses able to borrow between £2,000 and £50,000 in cash when, within days. It will start um, on the 4th of May. The loans will be interest-free for the first 12 months and businesses will be able to uh, apply online through the short and simple form, which is exactly what Sarah was describing earlier. There'll be no repayments during the first 12 months and 100% guarantee for the loan and any fa uh, fees and interest will be covered within the first 12 months as well. So it's on the .gov.uk website um, and they're called Bounce Back Loans. Um, so uh, we will... That if you if you look that up, you'll find it, um, and the details is on there, and then hopefully that form will be up and live. So we'll contact anyone we've already uh, been aware of who'd be uh, um, suitable for that. Uh, but that's the details that, that I've got as of last night's announcement. I think those are going to be fast tracked as well because there've yeah. been issues previously that banks aren't lending fast enough, and that's why the government is securing those loans, aren't they? I think. That's yeah, why it's and, much and exactly as Sarah described. There was a really useful call between uh, the, the the banking group MPs. Uh, the uh, people from the Treasury um, on about exactly this issues and the FSB uh, in particular have been pushing for this and they're very pleased with this so I'd like to think this would will start to unlock some of those particular issues some of the businesses we've been talking about today and some of the people um, who who we know are falling uh, between between the gaps and um, exactly as I think Kevin said where we can stand up and change and do things differently we're doing what we can uh, and small business is so important you know 60% of the, the UK is predicated on small business we know you know so many people rely on on these jobs and particularly around mid-Sussex so um, we, we'll monitor how this um, makes a difference for us but on those wider points that, that Sarah's looking at and we're lobbying with the Treasury we're um, again harassing them today because we sent in queries on some of this at the beginning of April and we've got people circling back in and wanting to know some answers the Treasury does know these challenges it's just what systems can we put into place 
where can we manage issues around fraud um etc etc it's not to, you know it's a it's a balance of helping the right people with the money that we've got Great, thanks, Mims. Now, does anyone else have anything else that they would like to ask? Speak now or forever, hold your peace. Is anyone? I've got um, a couple more questions from the ones that come in, and then I think we'll probably draw it to a close. Um, so taxes obviously need to be increased when all this is over. Um, will those businesses who haven't received financial support in any way of grants have access to reduced tax rates? Um, I'm not the Treasury, but I would completely disagree with raising taxes at the end of this. I would like to keep tax rates low. I would, for, I've already suggested, for example, to, to the Treasury to the end of the year um, uh, on certain levels of house buying that we get completely rid of stamp duty and get the, the house market moving back again. Um, I, there is uh, certainly filling my inbox lots of people asking about uh, companies that aren't paying enough money uh, and using the, the, the furlough scheme, particularly international companies. Mm -hmm. I think people will vote with their feet on this. If you don't do the right thing, either to your community as a, as a business, people will know and understand that. I think um, the world of social media has changed that. But personally, I would like to try and keep our business opportunities um, more broad and able because tax rates are kept at a reasonable level and I think most Conservatives would say that. There might be areas that we might to look at look at things differently and the Treasury will make, need to make that decision but we've seen it before you know if you just squeeze uh, people who are doing well they go off and do something else elsewhere and we just can't do this. We, we've got a big bill of, of supporting people this time and it's the right thing to do but we need ultimately um, to support and create more jobs have more people paying taxes and more of it. Uh, and frankly, I wouldn't want to hammer people that are taking a risk or have gone through this and through this difficulty um, and, and are continuing to keep people in work. One thing uh, I'm doing is my role in the DWP is I'm redesigning and looking at our new self-employment support offer. Um, we normally have a minimum income floor where you have to earn a certain amount of money uh, to um, uh, be able to to continue with your business etc and you'll seem to be gainfully self-employed I really personally am going to be looking at that and making sure that we are supporting people where particular sectors have been more hard hit and we've got some more agility in that area I think we're going to have to be uh, really open-minded on how we get through this and personally I think hammering people with taxes will just mean that there's less discretional spend and all of those other issues uh, and frankly I think for our economy that would be a real challenge certainly for the um, hospitality restaurant sectors who are probably going to take the longest to come back I just don't see a benefit okay so anybody else want to come back to that David you just popped a message on the group there was that relevant to yeah about social distancing oh. at work I'm um, I'm um, uh, yeah David did you want to say something oh I can't unmute you for some reason there oh, you go I think I'm fighting to unmute you you're unmuting me no, oh. Is that what was happening? Apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, we just literally in the last probably three days, we've had a series of inquiries about providing um, desk shields, perspex desk shields, thermal imaging equipment, so you can sort of take people's temperatures at work, uh, changing floor plates so people know how to safe distance. Because, you know, the last few years has all been about cramming as many staff into the smallest space as possible. Well, that's going to change. So it's just interesting, literally in the last three days, I think people are starting to think about how we get back to work. Yeah. And one of the other things I'm seeing more and more, which I guess is obvious, is people are moving CapEx expenditure just into OPEX. I try and keep the lights on. So everyone's um, cash reserves are going to be so depleted. So, you know, discretionary spends are going to be really tricky. Um, so people will just spend to sort of keep the staff and keep the lights on. Um, so I think it's it's going to be a challenging period for the next uh, for the next while. Uh, David, 
that's for some of the work that we're doing with the health and safety executive with trade unions with uh, public health england yeah um i think probably one of the best things about this if we can work differently we can work at home we've got less presenteeism and actually um some of the the benefits of this which may uh, mean that we can be more inclusive and supporters supportive as employee uh, employers to employees i think we can benefit from that i think we've got used to social distancing the kind of awkward of being impolite so I think yep. we can we can work differently it's certainly something we've had to to uh, balance with the DWP got 83,000 people in the workforce um, increased it by 10,000 in terms of processing and supporting people at this to this point we had no laptops in the D DWP if you didn't work in HQ we've now got 10,000 gone out to, to people who are uh, shielding at home either someone uh, in their household or that they can't work themselves we had about 17,000 people with underlying health conditions who we've been able to keep supported and, and working through this situation so I think there's some real benefits that when we get a chance to learn how to work differently how to spend less time on the road how to engage differently and we'll need that really importantly in terms of how to have a safe workplace we have very anxious and worried employees who yeah. we want to get back to work being productive and that that's sort of work be really vital any businesses here who are wondering how to do that really good advice on the hse website uh, the health and safety executive website have a look at that that will help you when you're starting to look at the next stage yeah. I think I think that's going to probably be our next Ask the Expert, David. So I think we probably want to invite you onto a panel for that. Yeah. Um, because I think that's the way we need to be looking now. I don't want to be too premature because we don't want to go against the government advice, but I do think we can plan for this so we hit the ground running when yeah. you know things are start restrictions start to go. I'm I'm going to now bring this to a close because oh hold on no I won't. Katie's asking a question so go go for it. Oh no, we're, we're battling against the, the unmute again. I'll let you do it, Katie. I'm taking my hands off. There we go. Hi, uh, thanks, Kevin. You've also been emailing me at uh, 9 p.m. at night, so I really appreciate um, your support on that. Um, I have a question for Mims. I work in the events industry. Um, currently, obviously, my venues are hospitals, and the likelihood of the events industry getting back to any sort of normality, you're not going to get 26,000 people at Excel for a very long time. No. We've fallen through the gap as an industry um, in support. You're offering support to hospitality, offering support to restaurants um etc cetera, etc cetera. but the events industry has really fallen through the support we're, we're going to be it's going to take us so long to get back to any type of norm that's not just for me that's for the bank of self-employed people um that i have on the industry is lobbying with government but you know local businesses work in the events industry so what what's what support have we got yeah, Katie, I got a huge sympathy and understanding for this challenge. And uh, it's one of the areas that we're also lobbying to, because you're exactly right, it's falling between between the gaps, whether it's, you know, the sports side of it, it's, it's the mass gatherings impact, it's, it's the challenges uh, there. Um, and huge amount of people who are self-employed, who then help other people be self-employed. I completely get it. And, and I'm, I think it's a huge challenge in our own backyard for example the, the south of england showground really impacted uh, financially it's, and it's a real struggle um, and this is why um i think we've got to do that work about what's safe we've got to do that work about uh, understanding how people can um you know start to go about a normal life and feel safe and that's where some of the testing work and the diagnostics i was talking to to Roche last uh, Friday about the amount of work that they're doing to do that um, and people are and we're going to have to start thinking about you know how do we um, you know do the things that we enjoy safely again and that's so important when it comes to the events in the sports industry um, the charity sector relying on this hugely it's all massively uh, interlinked and um, there is a um, yeah well done somebody's just reminded there is a sport England fund which is supporting particular people people in the uh, sports sector and there is some help in the charity sector but I agree with you this I'm going to be talking to UK hospitality shortly this and the seasonal stuff is is 
a real problem um, and I don't have any answers right now as I'm clearly alluding to but I get it and I know how much this affects uh, the broader em employment system because we aren't going to be able to when we're trying to get people back to work we aren't going to say right go go to high street retail because we haven't got those kind of jobs we might not have the hospitality and the bars and restaurants so again if we don't bring back the events industry how are we going to do this so this is a real um, conundrum I get it and I'll try and uh, agitate for, for more on this but I do think the amount of work that's going on in the in the health industry around the tracking trace the symptoms and the antibodies this this is the sort of stuff that gives us the answers and we're going to have to push everything on that and we know that as a government because actually if we unlock that we unlock the whole wider public safety issue and that's really probably the crux of the answer that you need Great, thanks. Katie, you, is there anything you'd like to come back with? Uh, I just, if I could just have my grant, that'd be great. <laughs> because, it, you know, my industry is just on its knees. Um, it won't get back until, we were saying September, but it's not sports events, it's B2B, um, primarily yeah. B2B biz, business events. You know, we can't get back to business. Our, our venues are hospitals now, um, which are much more important, by the way. I'd just like to say from a personal point of view, I'm very proud of my industry and how much we've, we've put into um, supporting the country. Um, but if we could just, if you could just jog on that VOA, that'd be really nice for us. Um, four, months is not, four months is not acceptable. You know, we work in the private sector. If I took four months to get back to my clients, they would be gone. You know, it's just not, it's just not acceptable. Personally, that's, that's my personal belief. Mm. And now, I would agree with that. Four months is absolutely not acceptable acceptable full stop yeah. even in this scenario you know we've pivoted things in the dwp because we've had to and we you know have got 1.5 million people you know the support they need you know other parts of government need to react quickly um i think local council's done a brilliant job and ours has been exceptional um uh, but other parts are just pedestrian and it's not good enough i agree yeah, we are paying the grants within two working days of receiving them here. It might take two days extra to reach your bank accounts, but we are turning them around quickly. But we do have to follow the guidelines that are laid down in respect of the rateable values and meeting the criteria. But as soon as we hear from the Valuation Office Agency, Katie, trust me, mm. we'll be in touch with you and we'll get you getting your grant. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank right, I'm, I'm going to wrap this meeting up. And um, I think... Obviously, I'm self-employed and I've, so through my own personal business and also through the HHBA, every day I'm seeing the pain and suffering and I'm not laying that on thick of, of local businesses. And, you know, I find it, it, it um, I find like I'm taking on the burden of other businesses, but I'm happy to champion that because in this position, I really want to make sure that all of our members and the outside um, you know, even those businesses who aren't our members can benefit from everything as soon as they possibly can because it, it just, it's it's just almost just basic stress levels and then your day-to-day -day income and, you know, everything that makes the world go round. And so I have to take heart from having this meeting this morning to see that so many people are working so actively to make that all happen. It's having the communication, I think, that's so key. And that's what I think as the HHBA, Sue and I need to work on. We, we Sue so channel stuff out the second she gets hold of it and it goes out. But if the communication isn't getting to the right people, we need to work out how we can improve upon that and maybe liaise with you guys more as well mm -hmm. about how the information gets to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I know businesses that have given up thinking, well, there is nothing. I've put them in touch with Kevin and Kevin's got them a grant. So mm -hmm. I know that there are people out there that are just um, not, not connected well we enough. Also, so. Claire, just very quick. I think I'm still sure, on. Sure, David. We, we did have two stabs at a loan. So we did get declined because <laughs> they were very keen. This is back in the days of personal guarantees. So we had two stabs on the loan and we we um got the green light last week on the loan so i think i would in, i would be going back to the banks if you tried and got a decline or as we were told initially and hopefully this new loan from yesterday as well could prove um more positive yeah absolutely so they bounce back yeah 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 um uh, thank you so much to Kevin, who's been working night and day for our members and the greater business community. Thank you, Jonathan and Stephen Hillier, and also Mims Davies. I think your presence here has been invaluable as well because you are, you know, the, the 
the point of contact that was most visible. So to take the time to join us, I'm very, very grateful. And I want to make sure we keep communication going as well after this. If actually, if you could hang on, Mims, as well, because I've got something I need to ask you afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise... No. I saw um, the British Chamber of Commerce at 10.15, so I promise no I'm it's fighting on your hand. No worries, it's just a very quick question about this. Yes, um, if anyone has anything more, direct your questions to Kevin or to Sue or myself. We're happy to take questions going forward. I hope that's been useful. Thanks, thank God. you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you very bye much. Bye.